All right, let's get started. So welcome to another ACM seminar. Today, we are very happy to have Professor Tak Soon Ho from Chungnam National University. And he will be going to talk about fast solution methods for partial differential equations, past, present, and future. Please welcome Professor Ho. Thank you for your in, uh, introduction and invitation. So today I'm going to talk about best solution method for partial differential equation. So many, I will mainly talk about uh, multiple method and domestic decomposition method, which is quite popular. This is a brief online of today's talk. So first I will give you some introduction and uh, I will introduce some best solution method, which is multiple method and domain composition method. And later we will compare the multiple method and domain composition method. They have some common feature and they have some difference. So I will figure it out. And finally, I will give you some recent and potential future development in this area. Let's first consider partial differential equation. So when we study partial differential equation, so we have, we mainly focus on this one, uniqueness and existence. And finally, in extremely large case, we have analytic solution. So in general, we cannot solve partial differential equation analytically. So instead of this approach, so for a practice, so we consider numerical solution. So numerical solution of partial differential equation. So we consider numerical method for partial differential equation. So that approximate the true solution. To do so, we have usually three steps. So the first step, discretization. So after this discretization, we have we usually have a system of algebraic equation. And then we solve the algebraic equation, then we obtain approximate solution. Finally, so as a viewpoint of uh, numerical analysis, analysis, so we analyze the solution. So how accurate the solution are and how effectively we can solve the system. So let's focus on my term. So this discretization process, so we usually use these two kinds of things, finite difference method. So for finite difference method, so we approximate the operators directly. So for partial difference equation, the finite difference method, we consider the stencil and in this direction, we consider the grid and we approximate the differential operator in some binary difference um, scheme. And uh, for binary element method, we consider variational form and we restrict the variational form to a finite dimensional space. Then we obtain a uh, uh, kind of algebraic system. And also, there are a bunch of other it's criticized method for using finite volume, it's continuous collocking, virtual element method, and isogeometric or immersed finite element. There are so bunch of yeah, other elements, but we mainly focus on this time the finite element method. So in most situations, we have a large sparse and usually then the linear system for linear equation. So this one AU is F. So for binary element method, we first consider variational form depends on the partial differential equation. And we consider the space U, which is finite dimensional space, which is usually associated with some Hilbert space. And A is uh, defined on this finite dimensional space. And this is for the right-hand side. So if we use this form, we have 
the linear system we previously considered. And we approximate the solution. You know, so we consider the approximate solution by solving the algebraic system. There are two kinds of methods. The first thing, direct method. This is based on factorization method. For example, Elliott factorization, Cholesky factorization, or nested dissection. This is quite good, but this is limited by the memory and speed computer of the computer if we have a large system. So if we have a large system, we cannot handle this directly. So as an alternative method, we consider this iterative method, the Jacobi outsider conjugate gradient or GMS. So this one, this method uh, can reduce the computational cost and the memory. But in some cases, in most cases, we may have large condition number. So for binary analytic discretization, if we decrease the size of mesh, then the condition number grow like this. And P depends on the element and the specific problem. So for Gauss-Seidel or Jacobi, we have this kind of convergence rate. And for conjugate gradient, we have this kind of convergence rate. So if the condition number is very large, this factor is quite close to one. So we cannot expect efficient solution. OK. So we need some other technique. And we finally, we analyze the solution. The first thing, so we usually consider this question. So how accurate the solution are? So usually we have this kind of error estimate. So two solution, the difference between two solution and the binary element solution, and this is bounded by some constant and the mesh size and some power P. And for Efficient numerical method, so we may consider this one. So we may consider some contraction number, so strictly less than one. This is the error operator, error propagation operator. Or if we use some preconditioner, then we may consider this condition number of the preconditioned system. Okay? So we usually we may focus on this kind of analysis. Okay. And I will go over some uh, popular pair solution method. The first thing, multiple method. So multiple method solve problem on a sequence of grid generated by a refinement procedure. And the main feature of this multiple method is optimal complexity in the sense of that the computational cost is proportional to the number of unknown order, big order, big O of order N. And for domain decomposition method. So we consider original program and we decompose uh, the original program into several smaller problems that are uh, much easier to solve the, than original problem. And we note that most of the problem uh, can be solved independently and concurrently. So it is quite suitable for parallel computation. Okay. And let's go over some history of multiple method. So early 60s, so Pedro and Co. first formulated the uh, multiple method for five stencil uh, FDM or Poisson problem. In 70s, Brent and Hekbushi independently uh, 
establish a convergence theory. And since early 80s, uh, there have been uh, actually two major research groups in Europe and in the United States, and they uh, actively uh, study this uh, area, and they invented a bunch of uh, other variants of this multigrid method, for example, uh, full multigrid method, algebraic multigrid method, uh, full option is a scheme for nonlinear method, yeah, that kind of thing. And here is a brief picture of the procedure of multigrid method. So let's say that we have some initial error after some uh, iteration. And we consider some pre smoothing step using some simple iteration method, iterative method. Then the high frequency error is removed, and we have this smooth error. And this smooth error, we restrict this one to coarse grid. And we consider this coarse grid correction step. After that, we have a small size of high frequency error, and this is removed by post smoothing. Okay. Why do we have this kind of phenomena? So, when you consider some uh, simple iterative operator for operation, for example, Jacobi and Gauss Seidel, so that are quite suitable for high frequency error relative to a fine mesh. So they cannot effectively remove the error associated with this coarse grid. That's why we need this coarse grid correction. Okay. This is uh, quite common for elliptic problem. Since uh, the elliptic problem, for elliptic problem, the domain of dependence is the whole domain. So for small error in on local, in a local region, impact may impact the whole domain, the error in whole domain. Okay, that's why we have this kind of uh, high frequency and low frequency uh, error. And in order to consider this multigrid method, we have two main ingredients. First one. Interval transfer operator. So we have to transfer the error or corrective solution effectively. So two kinds of error, two kinds of uh, operator, the restriction operator, so called fine to force a transfer operator. So this one down sampling the residual error to a coarse grid. And coarse fine operator, so called interpolation operator. So this one interpolating the result on the coarse grid into the fine grid. Okay. And another thing, we have to consider smoother. Okay. So usually we choose this smoother for reducing error associated with the given grid. If we specify these two ingredients, then you can completely determine what is the method. So here is an example of multi algorithm. So this is the most famous one, pre-cycle multi algorithm. So this procedure, multi -grid, and this is the number of, this is the current level, and this is the right-hand side, this is the initial guess, and this is the number of pre-smoothing, the number of post-smoothing. So for the coarsest degree, we just use this direct method, since the problem size is not that large. And for the rebel, return equal to one, we consider this procedure, recursive procedure. The first step, we consider this pre-smoothing step, and this one, we consider course security correction recursively and post smoothing step. So that's the um, <coughs> outline of recycle multi algorithm. 
And let's next consider domain decomposition method. So domain decomposition method is considered by Schwartz in 1870. And later, Leon, this one, this guy is uh, Pierre Leon, actually, suggests a uh, convergence theory for this short alternating method. Okay. So I will show you some picture. So actually, this is the picture on Schwartz original paper, so original drawing. So at that time, 18th, we know how to solve an equation on this circular, circular domain. And we know how to solve the equation on this square domain. And Schwartz uh, try a complicated domain like this, the union of this complete geometry. And uh, Schwartz want to <coughs> solve this uh, equation using pre-existing method. For one pole, this circle, and one pole, this square. So here is the idea. So we first solve the equation on this circle. Then this boundary is available. Then you can solve this equa equation on this square. Then this boundary is available. And we keep doing, then you can expect the convergence solution. But at that time, there was no corresponding theory. And for your information, I will show you another picture. This is the logo for domain decomposition method community. So this is originated from the short uh, drawing, this one, circle and rectangle. And this, the convergence theory is based on this one. So here Leon consider this procedure as this projection method. So this is the error at end step. And this is for domain one correction. This is for subdomain two correction. And they are actually projection. Then we expect the next step. So this, this operator are projection, so we can expect a component solution. That's uh, Leung's idea. And later, 80s and 90s, there are a bunch of variants have been introduced. For example, many subdomains. And for this alternative method is a kind of multiplicative method. So these two operator, we product these two, uh, two operator. And from uh, 80s and early 90s. So there are a bunch of variant, many subdomain, additive method, and concrete convergence theory, okay? So this is additive variant, and this is another hybrid variant. And this is 90s, popular method, so, so called PET, PET DP, so finite element hearing and interconnecting, and DP means dual and primer. And BDC, balancing domain decomposition by constraint, this is Neumann Neumann family. So, this type of non overlapping domain decomposition method has been widely studied, and nowadays uh, these two methods are very popular. And here is the basic idea of domain decomposition method. So domain decomposition method are intended for scalable parallel preconditioner. Okay. So we focus on this parallel computation. So we first decompose the domain into overlapping or non-overlapping subdomain. So for this overlapping subdomain, so we use overlapping method, and for this non-overlapping domain, we use iterative substructure method. And we assign one or several subdomain to each processor 
a parallel machine. Hmm? And in each iteration, so we solve the problem independently. Also, we solve one global problem. This is for scalability. As I mentioned earlier, for the elliptic problem, so the domain of dependency is the whole domain. So the local space, only local space is not enough. So we have to correct the global error. That's why we need this global problem. But small size is enough, OK? But we have to add at least one global space for scalability. And there are two main family of domain decomposition method. The first one is overlapping short method. So for this overlapping short method, we use uh, overlapping subdomain. So basically, we first consider non-overlapping domain, and we add in few layers to make this overlapping subdomain. And for iterative substructure method, we use non-overlapping subdomain. And we usually use reduced interface problem. So for overlapping domain, the subdomain, so we have this subdomain, this subdomain. So there is over the interface is in this overlapped region. So there is no problem. But non-overlapping, so non-overlapping this subregion, non-overlapping subregion, the interface we may have some problem. That's why we consider this reduced interface problem. And nowadays among them. Dual primer petty and BDDC method are most popular. And here is some feature of overlapping uh, short method. So for this overlapping short method, it's quite straightforward to implement. So we just use overlapping. We use solver associated with overlapping region and one Force problem. But we are since we are considering overlapping domain, so we may need additional computation cost and communication between subdomain is due to this overlapping region. And for iterative substructuring method, non-overlapping method, since we consider non-overlapping Subregion, so we can reduce the communication between subdomain. However, we may need a special treatment for the interface. So usually, the algorithm is quite complicated. And here is the basic setup for domain decomposition method. So we first decompose the domain into several subdomains. So the thick lines are thick lines for uh, subdomain. <clears throat> and for thin lines, so we use this final element. And if we consider non overlapping subdomain, we just use this non overlapping subdomain itself. But for overlapping subdomain, we add some layer like this, final length layer. And we usually use these three parameter, small h, the binary element, size of the binary element, capital H, the size of the subdomain, and delta is the size of the overlap. So we usually use these three parameter for analyzing the domestic person method. As I mentioned, the additive short method, overlapping short method, is quite simple. So we just consider this local subproblem. So restriction to subproblem, we solve the subproblem and prolongation. And we restrict to the first problem, small global problem, and this is the prolongation. That's the shape of this uh, overlapping additive short method. So using this uh, preconditioner, we usually consider precondition 
uh, conjugate gradient with this additive short method. So this is initialized process and this is preconditioning. And each iteration we do usual conjugate gradient step and we add this preconditioning step. And for non-overlapping domain decomposition method, this is quite complicated. So we first consider this interface and for BDDC or FATTP method, we have to first figure out the primary constraint between this subdomain. So this one is a primary variable. And for the dual variable, for FATTP method, we introduce Lagrange multiplier for this gap, okay? And for BDDC method, we directly consider the continuity of this dual variable. That's the main difference. But actually they are uh, theoretically the same. And in order to consider some efficient method, the selection of this primal constraint and balancing, it means the scaling between these two interface are quite important. They make the difference, okay? Okay, uh, at this time, so let's, con let's compare two methods, multiple methods and domain decomposition method. So I will give you two point of view. The first one, theoretical point of view. Actually, multiple methods and <coughs> domain decomposition methods have a lot of common feature mathematically, like this. So we consider residual and we consider this residual correction and we update the solution. So this is the basic strategy. So for this step, for a given grid, we consider some good part and bad part. The good part is can be removed by this, this method. And for the bad part, we consider another solver. So for example, course solver in multigrid and course grid, a uh, course grid in multigrid and course solver for domain decomposition method. So for the bad part, we convert this error to another problem and we consider this error correction step. And finally, we update this one. So with this framework, In 1992, uh, Jin Chao Xu introduced a generalized framework that covered most of the iterative method, including multiple method and domestic version method. So, and uh, they have, uh, in this work, there are two kinds of uh, categorization. The first one is multiplicative method and the second one is additive method. So as long as we construct this projection operator in some, with some assumption that satisfy some condition, then we expect the convergent iterative method, okay? There are uh, several uh, condition and the most important condition is this one, stable, decomposition. So U is de uh, decomposed by several function UI associated with the space from I0 to N. And the sum of energy of this decomposition, decomposed uh, function is bounded by some constant and the original energy. Then we can expect the convergent iterative method. This is quite important for analysis as well as uh, the computational uh, construction. And this is another theory, 
a point of view, theoretical point of view. Multigrid method usually focus on the contraction number, the error propagation operator, strictly less than one. And for domain decomposition method, usually consider is preconditioned linear system, the condition number of the preconditioned linear system. So usually this one is bounded by some constant and this one, one plus log capital H divided by small h and one plus capital H divided by delta. And we have some power P and Q. As we see this quantity, so this one capital H divided by H, this one is the size of some problem. Okay. So the whole performance does not depend on the problem size. We only, we, the, the local size only matter. And for this one, we have relative overlap, capital H divided by delta. So this is also independent of the problem size or any other parameter. And we have some power P of and Q, and this P and Q depends on the problem and final element we use and the course method or local method we use. Yeah, so this is problem specific. And for the computational point of view, they have some difference. So multi method consider moderate coarsening method and simple smoothers. So usually we consider many levels and simple smoother. And domestic coarsening method use rapid coarsening method and strong smoothers. It means that we just consider a couple of uh, levels or three levels, so strong uh, uh, rapid coarsening. And this strong smoother means the local uh, solver is quite uh, solved by exactly. Okay. And this is because multi has focus on the optimal complexity. So by introducing simple smoother and many level, so we expect the optimal operation count, capital N is the number one known. And for domain decomposition method, this is uh, natural for parallel computation. So we consider uh, subdomain and one, one or two additional level. So that's why the main portion you know, focus on this parallel computation. Definitely, we may consider hybrid method, combination of multiple method and domain decoupling method. So we can construct smooth, multiple smoothers based on domain decoupling method also. We can solve a uh, local problem or course problem based on multigrid method. In this case, we usually use algebraic multigrid. Okay. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, can you briefly mention what are the main drawbacks of each method? So as far as I understand mm -hmm. the main decomposition method, we need to match the interface problem, mm -hmm. which is the conversion when it comes to the 3D or more high dimensional mm -hmm. problems. Mm -hmm. So can you a little bit, on the, on the other hand, uh, multi-grid method doesn't really have such a problem rather than finding a preconditioner might be the most challenging part as far as I know about. Mm -hmm. so I wonder, can you really Briefly mention what are the two main drawbacks and why people come up with the hybrid method. Okay. So for multigrid method, so we mainly focus on the operation count for one multigrid suite. 
So that's why we cannot use quite complicated smoother, simple smoother, and multi level. Then that is not suitable for parallel computation. Since the each level is quite connected, so we have some communication between each level. I mean, the, on, on the course of it, we also have some communication across the processor. Definitely there is a variant of some parallel version of multi-grid method, but the uh, performance result is not that faster than the uh, usual one. And for the domain decomposition method, so that is quite straightforward for power computation. So we solve the subdomain concurrently. But for the interface, so we have to consider very complicated algorithm to make the yeah, make both of the continuity of the interface condition. Yeah. So that's the main drawback. So they, the algorithm is very complicated. So that's why I cannot uh, explain the algorithm in this short talk. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah, yeah. So it may take around 10 minutes, I guess, <laughs> to construct the uh, non the medical method for yeah, the interface correction, yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah. Thank you very much. OK. Let's focus on the next step, recent development. Actually, the recent development, I have interest, okay? So, we consider simple smoother, but are simple smoothers are enough? Are simple smoothers enough for multiple method? Not really in some specific problem. So we need some rich smoother short type for this kind of problem. For example, problems with large null space, uh, vector field problem for H, for example, H curl, H deep. This is uh, uh, pioneered by Arnold Pope Windsor. And recently, there are several research approach uh, one is done by Breno and myself, and myself. This is the efficient, smoother than Arnold for Windsor approach. And these two group, uh, the first group consider high order finite uh, element discretization. At that case, even though we consider H1 case, so we cannot expect a faster convergence for simple smoother. So we may need some additional effort. And this group, National Lab group in the United States, consider uh, another discretization. Discontinued uh, uh, Karlakin approach. And they consider this H curve, H deep, and H gradient problem. And at that, in their work, they also need uh, some smoother short type, but not simple. Okay. The Posner and Will Posner. I'm not sure yet, but yeah. yeah I guess he's in Livermore, I guess. Yeah. I met him uh, back in science. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's now at the Portland State. Oh, really? And Colab is uh, even more, and Dolman is in Sandia. And this is uh, so patient. So can you construct robust and scalable method for multi-scale problem with unstructured grid? For example, this kind of Coefficient distribution. So we have multi scale, and this multi scale uh, reside in some non okay, irregular sub region on structural grid. So 
So in order to consider, I, I will give you some background. So in order to consider some high purpose computing, so we mainly focus on two types of scalability. The one is, the first one is strong scalability. So if we increase the number of worker or processor, can you expect reduced uh, computational time? This is strong scalability. And for weak scalability, okay, if we increase the number of processor and we keep the size for each processor, then can you solve or large size of problem? That's the two question. And for this two scalability, it's a load balancing, he plays a main role. Okay. So we focus on this load balancing. <clears throat> and here's the challenge. So for multi-scale problems, so local server problems are usually single scale, but course problem has to take care of the multi-scale effect. So several approach has been made. So among them, the adaptive course technique are the most popular. So what is this kind of adaptive method? So basically, we consider one subdomain and another subdomain. And we consider the algebraic information between these two subdomain at the interface usually generalized eigenvalue problem. So we consider eigenvalues and corresponding eigenvectors. Then there are some good part and bad part, okay? So we keep the good part for the local solver and for the bad part, we consider this one at the core solver. But multi-scale problem, that part may get larger than the usual problem. So the course problem, we may have some bottleneck for the course problem. So that's why we do not, we may not have the scalability since we do not have the load balancing. Okay. The critical drawback of the adaptive method is the size of the course problem. Okay. This one might break the scalability. So in order to keep the scalability, so we consider low dimensional course space technique, okay? So this is based on some geometric information and we add some algebraic information. So this one is pioneered by Dolman and Widerland in 2017. And later, many research group, the major contribution is from Clavens group and Carbo, my academic brother and myself. I keep doing this one. And the recent development I may want to try. So can you combine machine learning technique and best solution method? There are several approaches. The first one, uh, Machine learning method support for setting up domain decomposition method. So this is done by Clavance Group as well. So ML PTDP and ML AGDSW. So the group, the member of the group use the machine learning method for predicting some primal constraint or classification. So, so they may use some geometric information and algebraic information. So they use some classification method for subregion for geometric information, subregion for algebraic information. And this group, Illinois group, uh, consider a parameter learning for optimized search. So for optimized search, we have to decide some parameter for best of convergence, and they use some unsupervised, unsupervised uh, approach for predicting the parameter. 
And several research group try this approach, set up for multiple method. So Italian group, they consider the threshold learning for algebraic multiple method. And this group, optimal smoother. And Italian another Italian group consider agglomeration grid for uh, algebraic multiple method. And this Illinois group also consider aggregating degree of freedom using graph neural network. So they use uh, machine learning technique for setting up this multigrid method and domain decomposition method. And there are some approach. And they use the uh, solver, uh, so-called uh, Neural network solver. Uh, nowadays, the famous one, a pin, physics informed neural network. So, this is pioneered by these two groups, deep domain decomposition method and D3M. And the brown group made the C pin. And uh, Hae Young Kim at Kyung University and her student. Young made this additive search based on uh, neural network solver. Okay. And Jin Chao Shu group and Clavon group made new network based on multi grid and domain decomposition. Okay. That's the recent uh, trend. And there are a bunch of more, but I cannot. I, I wasn't able to catch up, so there were a bunch of things. So. And finally, I would like to mention some future direction. So most of the approach for setting up the metric version method and multiple method. So most methods are based on supervised learning. So in practice, that's quite hard to use, right? So we need some data set and we have to train the data and we have to make the algorithm. Yeah, but that is not, it's very hard for collecting data and making the data set. So I am interested in some unspoiled learning. So I have some idea, but uh, I cannot validate this idea. So maybe some of you may help me. <laughs> and as a theoretical numerical analysis, so I want to establish some, some theorem, okay? Theories for this kind of thing. So combining multi-grid uh, uh, multi method and machine learning method. And this is the end of my talk. And thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for a very nice talk. Are there any questions from the audience? Uh, I have one more very quick question. Mm -hmm. so thank you, Professor, for your nice talk. And I saw some examples about how to solve the PD, like mm. equation. Mm. So are there any methods to solve nonlinear PDs using the FPM? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Are they using linearization techniques so that convert into linear system? Yeah, so linearization method and some Newton's method. Yeah, yeah. All right. If not, let's thanks to the speaker again for a great talk. Thank you very much.